that's just the dry goods. I didn't even know you needed this much stuff. Hey, what's up everyone? This week's gonna be cookie week. We're gonna be photographing cookies, cookies, and more cookies. Trying out 10 cookie recipes, gearing up for the holidays. I don't even know if I like cookies that much, but we'll be throwing them down on the table, making them look all tasty and good inside the camera. You know how we do things. Well, I don't know. Do I have enough stuff? What do you think? That's 25 pounds of brown sugar. So, maybe. So today's video is all about how I approach a food photography shoot. You know, my method for working on a project, whether it be large or small. Now, if I'm shooting a series of images for my portfolio, it's gonna be a little bit different than if I was, you know, shooting for a client. For example, this cookie shoot, you know, I'm buying ingredients in bulk, that way I can save a ton of money. I've also chosen to, you know, shoot recipes that are very similar ingredients, so I can use a lot of the same stuff and, again, save money. Personally, I like to shoot my images in series or sets of images. Instead of trying to build my portfolio by, you know, shooting cookies one day and then running around and shooting salads the very next day and then, you know, cooking steak the next day and so on, you know, but instead shooting images that, that go together or that are under the same umbrella, the same type of images. That way I can save on money, save on time and save on stress. Stress on a shoot can be a huge thing, even if you're just doing it for yourself in the comfort of your own living room, you know? Things can get pretty crazy pretty fast. So I've developed this ritual. It's a ritual that I do before every single shoot, and that's to sketch out my compositions. I start with the frame, and then I fill it in with all the great ideas that I had for that recipe. So when I get all set up, ready to go on a shoot, and things go off script, things go crazy, and your mind's going to bunch of different directions, at least I have these little sketches to go back to. Before I could even finish that first cookie recipe, I had to stop, put the brakes on, set up the studio, and make an image of these beautiful candied pecans because I think they would make a great ingredient shot. And I'm kind of always looking around for opportunities like this. Before I set up the studio, before I set up the camera, I'm reading through the recipe to see if there's any ingredients that might stand out on their own. Or, or maybe it's the recipe's method that will clue you into a couple of really good action shots. But it's uh, fantastic to have two, three supplementary images that pair nicely with that final image. I mean, it's good for your body of work or for your portfolio or Instagram or whatever, but at least in my experience, on my shoots, clients love it as well. I mean, it's, it's always great to give them something a little bit extra. It's like the B-roll of photography, you know, just something about the simplicity that I really love. For me, these images can stand on their own two feet, but if you take the time to bang out two or three, I think, personally, you'll be really happy. I mean, I absolutely hate getting back from making that final image, getting back to the computer and then, you know, thinking, gosh, this would be so much better if I just had some of those finer details, you know, those supplementary images that would just make the story so much more complete. Now it's perfect. playing around with in my compositions is repeating shapes. I think anytime that you're on a shoot with a lot of something of the same shape, like I am with this cookie shoot right now, even if it's only a few on the table like these three apple pie cookies, it's always great to grab at least one shot. I mean, it might not be your hero shot, it might not be the star image of the day, but grab one image that really highlights those beautiful repeating patterns. Well, I'm gonna bring out the large softbox today. 
And I'll be placing a light behind my diffuser. That'll make the light extra soft. And I'll probably even hit the other side with a white card, but it really depends on which cookie I'm photographing. If it's a little more rustic, I might just let those shadows fall where they may. But I will be letting my props and my background speak more to my story than the light. I mean, sometimes you do have to change up your lighting pattern per the food that you're photographing. And, and for me, cookies really speak softness and subtlety. And that's what I want my light to reflect. Mm. All right, it's about 6 a.m. No one is awake yet, but I wanted to get an early start. That way I could finish this shoot, but so far I think we're pretty good. I have a few ingredient shots here, a few cooking shots, and you know, some final images that are looking pretty nice. But to tell you the truth, I don't really have much of a sweet tooth, so all of this chocolate and all of this sugar is really killing me. So before we get started today, I want to spend this time and answer a few questions from my comment section. All right, the first question comes from Sandro. They asked, do you style and cook the food that you shoot by yourself? And the answer to that question is yes and no. Yes, on my own shoots or for clients who request that I style the food, I will style and cook it and then photograph it. But if I'm working for a client like a cookbook or a, a major project, then I'll hire a food stylist as part of the package uh, because you know, it just takes all of that stress and all that pressure of preparing the food and making it look nice away from me and it, and it puts it on a real professional and then I can just focus on the photography. Okay, the second question comes from Kira. She asks, where do you buy that attachment that you use for the above view pictures? Great question. I used to have a video on this actually a, a long time ago. I took it down. I'm gonna put up a new one in a few weeks that explains my overhead camera setup. It's a setup that I love. It's really simple. It's just two light stands, an extension arm, a couple of grip heads, a spigot, and a tripod head. It's lightweight. It can travel anywhere you want to go. You can carry it with you on set. You can set it up in five minutes and raise and lower your camera above the table and get that perfect level overhead shot. And, and I love it, so I'm going to be making a video on it here shortly, so stay tuned. Okay, the third question here comes from Lord Ario. I don't know how to say your name, but my lord, I'm here to answer your questions. Is there a way to do it all in camera? Because I can just slap some random food right in Photoshop without any strings and camera. I'm assuming that you're talking about my flying food tutorial. And if you're trying to piece this together in Photoshop using some random images that you find on the internet, if you don't uh, match the lighting or the light direction, then it will look completely unrealistic. So slapping it together or piecing it together in Photoshop seems like a very difficult task. It's much easier just to photograph it in camera using either strings or, or you, if you don't want to use the strings, you could throw the food or drop the food and let gravity take over. But I've tried that method and it works great for spices, for small objects and stuff like that. For liquid, it's fantastic. But for larger objects, it just makes more sense to hang them from wires. I mean, uh, you have all the time in the world to photograph them for the most part. Uh, your light direction will all match each ingredient and uh, it's easy to remove the wires in Photoshop. So I, I think it would, it's easier to remove the wires than trying to piece everything together and composite entirely in Photoshop without any camera or lighting. So that's my answer. I hope that helps. Um, and I think I'll make answering questions from my YouTube comments a regular thing on my video. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section. That's the last cookie shoot for today. I didn't get to finish them all, but man, that was a lot of sweets. And I'm pretty happy with the images that I've shot so far. And I think the big takeaway here, at least on how I approach a food photography shoot, is to one, really hunt throughout that recipe, search for that great food photography B-roll. You know, those action shots, those ingredient shots, all of those really good supplementary images that just tell a more complete story of your dish. Also, don't be afraid to change up your lighting. I have a really great lighting setup and it works for a variety of different foods, but every once in a while, I'll come across a dish where I think, you know, maybe harder or softer light would fit that story better. Also, you know, when I think about pre-production, I'm really trying to improve my strategies. 
You know, sketching out my compositions helps me save time. Also, choosing foods which have the similar ingredients where I can buy in bulk, that also saves time and it saves money. And I think we all need a little bit more money in our pocket, right? Well, that's it for this video. It was a lot of sweets. I'm all sugared out. I think next week will be a salad week, but I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.